Okay. So on Friday, we talked about and about inclined planes. Okay, we talked about how they are, like most simple machines, a force multiplier. Okay? If I was gonna lift the 10 kilogram box from the bottom of the incline straight to the top without using the incline, I would have to use 98.1 newtons worth of force in order to do that. Because that's how much the force of gravity is pulling directly downward on this box width, okay? So if I were to lift it at a constant velocity directly to the top, I would have to exert 98.1 newtons of force to do that. If I use an incline, I don't have to use as much force to get it to the top. Because what is the incline doing? Okay, giving me the option to push it, giving me the option to push it because when I set it on the incline, the incline supports some of its weight. Not all of it, because obviously it'll want to slide back down towards me if I don't push. Okay? If this is a frictionless incline and I don't push on that box, it's going to slide right back at me. Okay? But it will support some of the box's weight. Okay? Um, now, the amount that it'll support is equal to the normal force. And the normal force, we know, acts outwards, that's too long, okay? acts outwards directly from the surface on which the object is sitting. Okay? That will be our normal force. Those are the two forces acting on any mass that sits on an inclined plane. Okay? Here's where they create a mechanical advantage for me. Since they're both vector quantities, I would add them by drawing them tail to head, like so. Okay. That is going to produce a net force between them that is parallel to the plane. That's the force I have to overcome if I want to push this box up the rim. It's much less than 98.1 newtons. Everybody with me there? Okay. The reason it's much less than 98.1 newtons is because it's the vector sum of two forces that are opposing each other at least somewhat. Not directly, but somewhat. Okay. There is a 30 degree difference in the direction between gravity and the normal force because the ramp is angled at 30 degrees. Okay. So that's why they're offset by the same angle as the ramp. So since I know the hypotenuse of this triangle, could I figure out what the vector sum of those two forces would be given that triangle? Okay, so how would I calculate the force we call F parallel? Right, okay, I would use sine because I'm looking for the opposite side and I have the hypotenuse. So F parallel in any inclined plane, okay, any inclined plane, F parallel is the sine of theta times the force of gravity. In the case of this particular incline, it's the sine of 30 degrees times 98.1. The sine of 30 is 0.5, so F parallel is 49.05 newtons down the ramp. So that means if I use this ramp instead of lift, I only have to push with 49.05 newtons to move it up the ramp. That's a mechanical advantage. I don't have to bear the entire weight of the box anymore. The ramp is doing some of that for me. Okay, does everyone kind of follow on that? Okay. All right, so now that I know that, okay, now that I've done this, if this is a frictionless ramp and all I've done is set the box on it, can I calculate the acceleration of the box as it slides down the ramp because that's what it's going to do? Okay. 
Okay? I'm not pushing on it. I just set it on the ramp and let it go. It's going to slide down this frictionless ramp. Okay? Can I calculate its acceleration now? How do we usually calculate acceleration? With a Newton question. F net over M. Did I just calculate F net? Right? The only two forces that are acting on this box, if I'm not pushing or pulling it, and there's no friction, are normal force and gravity. So F parallel is the vector sum of those two forces. Right? So all I would have to do is go 49.05 divided by 10 kilograms. And I got the acceleration to be 4.905, but only have two significant digits. So 4.9 meters per second squared down the right. Okay, what if this ramp wasn't frictionless? What if there was 10 newtons worth of friction? How does this change? Which way is friction going to act? Okay, it, we haven't talked a lot about friction, so here's what you need to know about friction. Friction always directly opposes the motion. The motion of this box should be down the ramp. Which way does friction act? Up the ramp. Up the ramp, not straight up. Okay, you have to understand that down and down the ramp are different. Up and up the ramp are different. Okay, so the force of friction would be here. It would be 10 newtons. Well, I can very easily take that and put it onto my free body diet or onto my uh, vector diagram here as well. Okay, I could do this if I wanted to. Just put the force of friction on there. Okay, so now I've got this one and this one, and then I've got this one here. My net force would now be a little less. Now, I would not want to solve this by doing that. Okay, there's no need to add all those extra arrows underneath here. That's technically what's going on, but I don't want to solve it that way. Okay? I know there's 10 newtons worth of friction acting up, and I know that these two forces add up to produce this force, which acts this way. Those are the only two forces now. Okay? F parallels the vector sum of normal and gravity, and friction's opposing it. So if I just draw it that way, now it's you know, collinear vectors and it's really easy. Okay? Now my net force is 39.05 newtons and my acceleration would be 3.9 meters per second squared down the ramp. Okay? That's all that changes if there's friction. Okay? Everybody all right with how that works? Okay? So what you always do, sorry. How did I get the 10? Yes. I made it up. Oh. Yeah, that, no, I, there, there, no, there's no secret to that. I just said there's 10 newtons worth of friction, and I just threw it on there. So yeah, that's, <laughs> I didn't figure it out anyway. I just made it up. Okay. Um, how would this be different if I was, instead of having, let's say I still had 10 newtons of friction, but let's say that I was also pushing on this with, 65 newtons worth of force up the ramp. Now what happens? Put the 65 where the time goes. Okay. Where does the 10 go? The other way. Friction always opposes the motion. So on an inclined plane, friction can act up or down. It depends which way the box is going. Okay, right now, clearly this is bigger than this, so friction is now acting down the ramp with 10 newtons worth of force. Okay, then now I just do vector sum of all forces again. Okay, so I'm going to have uh, 5.95 newtons up the ramp as my net force. Okay, 
everything on an inclined plane, we want to draw as though it goes up or down the plane. Okay? The only thing we can't do that with is that internal triangle that gets us F parallel. That triangle is always the same. Okay? This internal triangle always has gravity as the hypotenuse. Normal force is this side, which we're not even going to use till later in the week. Okay? And F parallel has the opposite side. Okay? Now, a way a question like this can trick you. Instead of telling you the mass of the box, it tells you the weight of the box. Okay? So if I tell you that this is a 98.1 Newton box, does that change the question at all? It doesn't. It just means I gave you that number instead of making you calculate it. I did not, however, give you the mass. You'll have to calculate that by going 98.1 divided by 9.81. Really difficult, okay? but you'll get the 10 kilograms. Sometimes a question will do that. The trick here is recognizing when they do that. It's really easy to go, oh, 98.1 kilograms. No, it was 98.1 newtons. Always watch for that. They give you the weight of the box that's different than giving you the mass of the box. Okay? Like in this one. All right? Give that one a try with the 340 newton box. All right, so the first thing we want to do is draw our diagram. Okay, we have a 30 degree incline. We have a 340 Newton box. So we know the force of gravity, the hypotenuse of the triangle, is 340 Newtons. What I want to calculate right now is, actually I don't even need the mass. I don't need it, don't need to calculate it. Okay, um, this side here is gonna be my normal force. I don't know what that is, I don't need it, okay? 30 degrees here, and then this side here will be F parallel, which I'll need because F parallel is acting this way. All right, so to get F parallel, sine of 30 times 340, so basically divide that in half, we're looking at 170 newtons. Everybody okay with that? Okay. So F parallel is 170 newtons. Sorry, I'll just write how we calculated that. F parallel, sine of 30 times 340 equals 170 newtons. Okay, the other forces involved, okay, applied force up the ramp of 200 newtons. Okay. Now, it's being pushed up this incline. It's moving up the incline, but it's moving up the incline at a constant velocity. What does that mean? Net force is zero. The net force is zero. Okay, that's really important. Okay, F net equals m times a, and that equals zero newtons. That equals F parallel plus F applied plus the force of friction. And the only one of those I don't know is the force of friction. Okay, so I can simplify this even more. There's 200 newtons up the ramp. There's how many newtons in total down the ramp? 200. So what's left? 30. Okay, there's 30 newtons left over. That's what the force of friction acting down the ramp has to be. Okay, and all we're doing here is going 0 minus 200 minus negative 170 equals the force of friction. Well, when we do that, we get negative 30. 30 newtons down the ramp, that's the leftover force of friction. Okay. Everybody all right with that one? So in the end, yes, we haven't done a inclined plane question before, but in the end, does it work like all the others? M times A, sum of all forces. It's all the same steps, there's just a little twist in here with this internal triangle that we hadn't done before. Here? Yeah. This is 30 oh, newtons. Uh, like on the Here? 340 newtons. Oh. Right? Because they told me it's a 340 newton box. So they gave you the weight, not the mass. It works out. I didn't need the mass because there was no acceleration in anyway. mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions on that one? Right, to try this one. 
You've got a child sliding down a 25 degree hill on a sled. So they're sliding down the hill. Friction resists with 150 newtons. The child's mass is 50 kilograms. Calculate their acceleration. Okay, so for this one, okay, we've got our incline. This time it's 25 degrees. Okay, we got the kid at the top of it this time. Not that that changes much. In fact, it's really inconvenient to draw it at the top. And okay, draw it here. Okay, we got the force of gravity acting down. Okay, we know their mass is 50 kilograms, right? So we know the force of gravity will be 490.5 newtons. Okay, we'll have our normal force here. That won't matter. Okay, and we'll have our force parallel here and this 25 degree angle. Right? The other thing we know is that friction is resisting them with 150 newtons up the ramp. As the question tells us they're sliding down the ramp. Okay? So all I have to do is calculate what F parallel is. Okay? So F parallel will be the sine of 25 times 490.5 newtons. Sorry, I guess I didn't have the calculator started here. So 207.29 down the ramp. Okay, I'm just going to write 207 newtons for now. I'll put in all the decimals in a minute. All right, those are my only two forces acting along the plane. 150 up, 207 down. So now I can calculate my net force. All right, it'll be 207.29 minus 150. Okay, so I'm going to get 57. 0.29 newtons down the ramp as my net force. Okay? And then from there, I can calculate the acceleration. Right? So it'll be 57.29 divided by 50 kilograms. So we're going to get just over one okay, um, here. So um, minus 150 okay, divided by 50. So we got one point. Uh, we only have two significant digits here. So 1.1 meters per second squared downhill that would be the acceleration of the job. Okay, questions on that one? Everyone's good with that one? Okay. I want you guys now to work on a couple of the worksheets from the workbook, okay? Um, but I want you to kind of go back and forth so you get different types of questions. Let's just call that up here. So there's an incline planes worksheet, and that's on page three. And then after that, there's a force as a vector quantity worksheet that starts on page four. This is what I want you guys to do. I want you to go back and forth. Do question number one from the incline planes, then do question one from the force as a vector quantity. Otherwise, you're going to do a whole bunch of incline planes in a row. And you're going to get really like, incline crazy. Okay, so I want you to go back and forth because we also need to do some forces of vector quantity types of, of questions as well. So I want you to go back and forth, okay, and we'll do any ones that you request, any ones that give you trouble. I have a few that I'm going to want to do anyway, but I suspect there'll also be ones that you'll probably ask for. So don't be afraid to ask. If there's one that you don't get, okay, we'll do them together up here because there's a few that are a little bit tricky. You do have to read them carefully. Look for keywords like constant velocity. Okay? And remember, especially when you're on the vector quantity questions, okay, that you're going to have to do some vector stuff, some trig stuff okay, for most of those questions. 
All right, so go back and forth between those two, okay, and then we'll go over any ones that give you trouble. Okay, but today's kind of a day of practice. We've learned all about systems and all of the inclined planes and all that. Now we've got to see all the different types of situations. Okay, so for the first one here, the key is to draw the free body diagram, okay, and show all the stuff that's going on. So we know that this is going to make a 45 degree angle and that there is 2,000 newtons worth of force in the cable that is being used here. So the car has no analysis? Yeah, I figured like the car was on. Well, except, I mean, think about it. When, I, when a tow truck pulls a car, yes, it angles the car like this, but which direction does the car go? Yeah. Forward. Right? Even though the car might be lifted, the front of the car might be lifted off the ground, the whole car, the mass of the car, doesn't go in the direction of the cable. It goes forwards. Right? Think about this. If I'm looking at an angled force, this angled force has an upward component, okay, the vertical component of that force, and it's got a horizontal component to that, to that force. Okay? Is the car moving vertically? then what's the net force vertically? Zero. Zero. Okay. So I'm not worried about this angled 2,000 newtons worth of force. I just need to know how much of that 2,000 newtons is pulling forwards because they tell me that friction is opposing with 500 newtons. Okay. So again, this is one of those questions where I have to picture what's happening. Yes, the car might be angled at 45 degrees, but the car isn't moving 45 degrees. It's moving horizontally. And whether or not it's angled, that's the way it's going, right? So I've got to find this side so I can find my net force. So I'll take that 2,000 newtons. Oops, sorry. I'll get, uh, sorry, the sine of, or sorry, cos of 40. It doesn't matter which one. It's 45 degrees. Cos of 45 times 2,000. So 1,414 newtons that way. Okay, going forward. So now that I've got that, now I can calculate my net force because I know the car is moving horizontally. So this force doesn't matter. Force of gravity doesn't matter. Okay? None of those forces, none of those vertical forces make any difference here because the car isn't moving vertically. It's moving horizontally. Okay? So I just have to go 1,414 with all the decimals minus 500. So I'm going to get 914 with all the okay, newtons. That's how much net force there is acting on the car. And since I know the mass of the car, I take my net force and divide it by the mass of the car, 1,500 kilograms, and I'm going to get 0 0.609 meters per second squared forward. Okay. Or towards the tow truck. Does that make sense? That's the kind of stuff that goes into a force as a vector quantity kind of question. Yep. All right, any other ones given the trouble so far? Don't be afraid to ask, guys. This was one of the ones I was going to do if you guys didn't request it because it usually comes up. All right, so. He's not happy, okay? He's hooked, and he's being pulled this way, okay? He's not going that way, though. He's just being pulled that way, right? We know that we're looking for the tension in that line and that it makes a 45-degree angle with the horizontal, okay? So he's moving horizontally. Friction is opposing with 80 newtons, and key words here, constant speed. Since the fish is moving horizontally at a constant speed, the horizontal component of the tension in the line has to be equal to the force pulling backwards. Okay, So this side here is 80 newtons. That's what we have to get out of this. After that comes the vector part which is, okay, I'm looking for the tension, and I know that this side, the adjacent side to the 45 is 80, and now I can calculate what T is. 
Okay, so T will be the um, 80 newtons divided by either the sine or cos, because it's 45 degrees. Okay, actually it should be cos because it's adjacent, not that it matters. Cos of 45, that's going to give us our 113 newtons um, at 45 degrees from horizontal. Okay, so again, the big, the big realization here is constant speed, okay, um, so that we know the object is moving horizontally so we can apply it to that side. Okay. All right, any others? All right, so for number three, okay, this is like the static ones we were doing on Friday, okay? So we, we know right away the net force is zero, okay? So we got sine like this, okay? And the sine is a 55 kilograms, okay? Cables are attached to these walls and they are 35 degrees from each wall. Right. So basically by telling you that they're the same angle, they're telling you there's the same amount of tension in both of them. If they were different angles, then it'd be a lot tougher because then it would be different tensions. Okay? So they're the same. So then we have to realize that there's a force of gravity pulling down here on the 55 kilogram mass. Okay, and we calculate that just 55 times 9.81. Okay, so 539.55. Newton. So that's how much force is down. Each one of those cables has to pull up with how much of that? Half. Half. Right? So I know then that each one of these cables has a triangle that points away from center and up. And that this side here is going to be one half of the 539. So just divide that by 2. Right? So 269.775. Newtons is how much the upward component or vertical component is for each one of those cables. All right, so now what I need to do is find this tension, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle that I've now made. So I have the adjacent side and I'm looking for the hypotenuse. So that means that the cos of 35 equals 269.775 divided by the hypotenuse. That's what I'm looking for. Right, so the hypotenuse then will be 269.775 divided by the cos of 35. Okay, so we get 329 newtons. Now I wrote the complementary angle, 55 degrees from horizontal, but I could have also written 35 degrees from the wall. That's the direction it's pulling. Does that make sense? All right, any other ones giving us trouble so far? Okay, I'll give you a few minutes more because there is one that I'm going to want to go over here in a minute or two. All right, so for this one, we've got this truck sliding down this uh, icy hill that's a 20 degree angle, okay, and it's 2,000 kilograms. Okay, force of friction is 500 newtons. Okay, since they tell us that the truck is sliding down the ramp, I know friction has to be acting up the ramp. Okay? Um, so if I'm drawing out all my forces here, obviously I have gravity acting straight down, and that'll be with 19,620 newtons, right? 2,000 times 9.81. I'll have my normal force here, which is unimportant for this question, and I'll have my F parallel, right there that I'm going to need to calculate. All right, so I can calculate F parallel by going sine of 20 degrees times the force of gravity, 19,620. Okay, so I've got a force down the ramp here of 6,710 newtons. I'll put all the decimals in later. Okay, so now those are the only forces acting. Friction and F parallel. Those are the two. They're opposing each other. So all I have to do then is calculate my net force. 
Okay, F net will be 6,210 minus 500. Okay, so that's going to give us uh, 5,710. Is that right? I think so. Okay, Newtons, right? Down the right. Okay, now I can calculate the acceleration of the truck because acceleration is F net over M. Okay, um, so I just go. 5,710 divided by 2,000, okay. and that should give me my 3.11, I believe. Oh, whoops, sorry, I didn't do that right. That's supposed to be 6,710. That's, my net force is 6,210. See, I'd done that in my head, ahead of myself, got ahead of myself. All right. 6,710 newtons minus 500 gives me 6,210 newtons for my net, net force. 6,210 divided by 2,000 should give me 3.11 meters per second squared down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other ones? All right, I'll give you a few more minutes and then I'm going to go over number four from the vector sheet. So, building the pyramids. Okay, so building the pyramids involved using ramps. Not alien technology. Unless ramps are alien technology, and then, okay, fine. Okay, I'm sure that if aliens reached Earth, they had already invented or discovered the inclined plane. Okay, all right. So we've got an angle here of 10 degrees, and again, these two key words, constant velocities, going up the ramp. So I know that the mass of these blocks is 5,000 kilograms. Okay? Um, we know that friction is pulling with 800 newtons. Which way? Down. Yeah, down the ramp. Okay? It has to be because they're pulling these blocks up the ramp. All right, so friction's 800 newtons. Okay? And then we've got what other force pulls down the ramp? Right, half parallel. Since we're moving at a constant velocity, this applied force that we're looking for is equal but opposite to the sum of these two forces. Agree? Okay, because if it's moving at a constant velocity, the net force is zero. So the force up the ramp and the force down the ramp have to be the same. All right, so all I have to do then is find F parallel. So here's FG. Okay, it's going to be 49,050 newtons, 5,000 times 9.81. Right, we've got normal force over here, which we won't need for this question. Then we've got F parallel here. That's a 10 degree angle. Okay, so we're finding F parallel. F parallel is the sine of 10 degrees times 49,050 newtons. So 8,517 newtons. All right, since it's moving at a constant velocity, the force up has to balance these two forces. 800 plus 8,517 is 9,317 newtons. Up the ramp. Up. Up ramp. Any other ones? Guys are doing good. Keep it up. All right. So number six is just like vector component addition. I've just got to put the forces tail to head okay, for this one. So I got them making this snowman, pushing the snowball in position. First one pushes with 130 newtons at 15 degrees west of north. Okay. So here's north. Here's 15 degrees west of north. So here's x. Here's y. 15 degrees. 130 newtons, okay? And then the other child pushes with 110 newtons due west. Right. That means that my net force, and thus the movement and acceleration of the snowball, will be along that green line. Okay, so this will be y, this will be x, and that will be my final vector, and this will be f net. Okay, so what I've got to do is find all my x's and y's, which is easy for the red one because it just goes horizontally west, 
110. Okay, but for the black one, I've got to actually calculate it. Right? So um, black x will be the sine of 15 degrees times 130 newtons. Black y will be the cos of 15 degrees times 130 newtons. Okay, so that one will be... Okay, so 33.646 newtons, and then this one here, uh, is 125.57. Okay, so now that I've got those two sides, okay, and this one's 33. Right, now I can figure out what green X and green Y are. So green X is going to be 110 plus 33, so it would be 143.646 Newtons. And Y is just going to be 125 because it's the only time we go north. Okay, sorry, 0.57. All right, with me there? Okay, so now I can calculate my hypotenuse okay, by using Pythagorean theorem. So square root of answer squared plus 143.646476 squared. All right, so our hypotenuse there, our net force is 190.79 newtons. I also need to get the angle, so I'm going to do some trig here to get that angle, opposite over adjacent. So I'll have um, 10 to the minus 1 of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, which is 143, 6464756. Alright, so 41.2 degrees. And now I can calculate the acceleration. I just take F net divided by the mass, okay? And the uh, mass of the snowball was 50 kilograms, so I take my 190.79 divided by 50, and I get 3.82 meters per second squared, okay? I got 41.2 degrees uh, north of west, but I'll obviously also 48.8 degrees west of north would be acceptable because it's the complement. And the other one's giving us trouble. Take. Um, can you use eight from the um, solar ones? The yeah. inclined plane ones? Yep. All right. So we got uh, ski jumper. All right. So going down a hill. Okay, we're going down that big ramp if you've ever watched that. Okay. 35 degrees. Okay. There's 70 kilograms. Uh, oh, I haven't taught you coefficient of friction, that's why you don't know how to do it. Okay, we're going to be going over this tomorrow, but force of friction is equal to mu, that's the coefficient of friction, times the normal force. So this is the kind of question where now this side becomes important. I need to know that side, I multiply it by the point one, two, zero, that gets me the force of friction, which would act up the ramp. It's just an extra calculation, but we haven't talked about coefficient of friction yet, that was my plan for tomorrow, so don't do that one. Okay. I haven't talked to that yet. Can you do number five on the incline, please? Five on the incline, please. Okay, so they used to have this, I don't know if they still do, they used to have this here in town, they had the soapbox derby, and they go down the shell hill there, okay? Past the, what's well, it called now, Veterans Way, okay? Um, so, if we're going down this hill, Okay, and it's angled, sorry, we're looking for the angle. We don't know what it is, right? But we do know that the children have a mass of 65 kilograms. They are accelerating at 4.25 meters per second squared. The forces acting on them are F parallel and friction, okay? We know friction is 25 newtons, okay? Um, here's the other thing we know. We know this internal triangle. Okay. This side's FG, this side is normal force, this side is F parallel. Okay. 
Okay, and then this angle here is the one we're looking for. So this is the triangle I want to use to get the angle. I already know what FG is because I can calculate it by just going 65 times 9.81. Right, so it's 637.65. I have acceleration and mass. What can I find? Net force. Okay, so I'm going to take that 65 kilograms times 4.25. Was that with the acceleration? Yeah, 4.25. Okay, so my net force is 276.25. My net force is also the sum of F parallel and the force of friction, which I know to be 25 newtons. So I'm going to bring this over here, and I'm going to have 276.25 minus negative 25 newtons. And that's the part people sometimes miss here. Because it's up the ramp and the net force is down the ramp, it has to be negative. And it's going to give me 301.25 Newtons um, as my F parallel. Okay, and now I can put that in here, 301.25, and then I use trig, in this case sine, to get the angle. So theta will be the inverse sine of 301.25 over 637.65, and that'll give me my 28. Degrees, which is a wicked hill. You would never let a child go down a 30 degree hill on a cart. Because they would definitely get hurt. All right. Let's call it there for today. Your quiz tomorrow will be on stuff like this. So I'll post it here shortly and you can check it out tonight. Also, a reminder your Newton lab reports are due on Wednesday. Make sure you have those ready for the start of class. Bye,